Hello there, great person, and welcome to another episode of Let's Read the Wheel of Time, Book 2, The Great Hunt. So last time we had a very eerie horror story of Rand and Med and Perrin and their crew following the attack crew of the Trollocs that, yeah, they stole the Horn Falir, they set Perrin Fane free and... We had some gruesome scenes last time and a murderer was actually crucified or nailed to a door alive and uh, yeah, very bad stuff. So let's see where we go today and let's see what the chapter title actually is. So chapter 11, it's called Glimmers of the Pattern and the symbol is the symbol of the Wheel of Time itself, the Ouroboros snake and the wheel interwoven with it. So let's see what this is. I assume it's going to be a lore chapter because the pattern chapters are mostly yeah, world building lore stuff that is quite fundamental. At least the last times we had something like this and we're just going to start with it and let's see which person's POV we will get today. So I don't know who it is yet, but it is being spoken about Inter, so I assume it's Rand again. So there, and whoever's POV it is, they are camping in a hollow and earlier than before because they are all shaken by the events they have lived through. And yeah, I wonder whether they will catch the culprits. Might do that, might only catch them down the line, but uh, let's see what the characters say about the events. Okay, they are, they are talking about the Andrea ghost woman they saw, and um, Uno is very adamant on telling everyone, yeah, I saw her, she was a woman, she was burning, saw her at the ferry as well, so I'm sure I saw her. That for me means, because it's brought up again, last time I, I was almost at the point where I said, yeah, this might just have been a really, might have been a hallucination. But now that it's brought up again, I'm pretty sure that Jordan is planting this, that this is going to be something. Yeah, and of course, Uno is cursing a lot, but we knew that already. He's the curse boy. Okay, so Rand is now, it's, it's Rand perspective and he is listening to what Uno says, but what he's thinking about is, yes, okay, there was a woman, that was weird, it was an unreal ghost woman, but what about the room with the flies, what really happened there? And I thought a bit about that as well, because that was the repeating stuff, I don't know, and I, I, I think I wrote it in a comment to someone, and um, it, it is like... It's like the, the concept of the wheel of time itself, because something is always repeating, but there is some little difference. And the little difference in this one was that Rand, in between the, re, uh, um, the, the repeats, in between Rand felt the room. But other than that, it was just like the story repeat itself. I really like that, but I wonder what that was. Was, was that Rand... Tapping into the one power was that Rand who was trying to perhaps read the room. And with read the room, I mean like 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 take the the room's essence into into whatever his mind, I don't know, and to 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 see what was there, and then the one power is like acting on itself and showing the, him the stuff and it's very weird. I don't know what happened, but it feels like Rand tapped into something connected with the wheel. Okay, and Rand is wishing for Moraine because he wants an Esedai, and to be fair, he probably also wants a friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rand is like, he's feeling it. It isn't just some dark friends and a few Trollocs, and maybe a fade anymore. And it's like, 
like a month ago or a year ago, that would have been pretty disturbing all, on itself. But now it's like, yeah, that's everyday business. We do that every day. Like we fight against two fates and three trollocs every day. I don't know. It's normal business. So business as usual. So well, why why bother with it to think about it? And there is something strange there. There is something strange. Here is something else. Yeah. Yeah, and what I really love about the Myrtle being nailed to the door is that it's, as far as we know, perhaps aside from the Drakkar, it's the worst thing the Dark One threw at us. And save for the Forsaken, perhaps. So that's the worst creature we know, and it just it was just destroyed by something. I really like that. It's very clever writing. Okay, so Inktor has the hypothesis that uh, the fate was just taken by the Trollocs. They would have never, never dared. Yeah, and he... It, it's even worse than that. It's... He ignores, uh, ignores it. He just says, yeah, the people in the village, Trollocs took them, ate them, tortured them for fun, whatever. But he does not really address the fate yet. Okay, and Ingtar again, he does not really address it. He just says, yeah, Moraine, this is the present. Moraine says, I should give to you <laughs> when we are, have crossed the Adia Rin River. Yeah. Oh, I was told to tell you at the same time that if anything happens to me, the lances will follow you. Does he expect, I mean, he doesn't because he was told it by Moraine. But he has been acting weird because he's starting to feel the effects of depression and whatever he feels when they uh, during the hunt. So yeah, he will probably end. Um, and Ren is supposed to take the lead. That's interesting. Wow, wow. So Agalmar told Ingtar that Ren is second, not Uno. Ren is second. Wow, they must have a lot of trust in him. We know he's the dragon, but I, I, uh, Agilmar doesn't know that, so that's pretty impressive. I heard rumors from the women's apartments that you were really a... a what? He doesn't finish the thought. A caster? I don't know. Probably not. Probably something different. A lord, perhaps. Perhaps that's it. Yeah. It mu there must be a lord or a king or whatever. Oh, wow. I would not claim that I would have chosen you, but you certainly have it in you to lead. And I'm paraphrasing a bit, but that's basically what Inktar says here. So, I don't think that Inktar is a man who would just blindly follow a sword, like a heron blade. Yes, it's prestigious. Yes, it normally shows that you are very capable of fighting and stuff, but I don't think Inkta would just say, yeah, okay, because you have that play, you're the second. So there is something about Rand himself that is very, very intriguing and very radiating some leadership or whatever. Okay, so Uno knows, who else does know? All the lances, wow, okay, okay. Okay, yeah, 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 everyone knows, wow, because they have to know, obviously. That is quite clever, that's very clever. So if they didn't know, that would be like, yeah, but we thought this one was second, why is he not? And they would just split apart or something. Needless infighting. If I go to the last embrace of the mother, the duty is yours. Yeah, that's fair. I think Ren would probably make a good leader. I think what he's lacking a bit is uh, not tactics, but more the... He's hesitating a lot, thinking a lot, which is not a bad thing. But in battle, when, when push comes to shove, he really, really does need to be decisive. And I don't think he has that yet in that... In, in, that, in, in that amount uh, that he needs to lead. 
Yeah, but 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 the things Inter says it's just like a death flag currently for me. I think he's gonna die, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, they're arguing a bit because Rand obviously doesn't want it. He doesn't want it because he thinks the asset I are controlling him, pushing him into a certain direction. But it's also he's I think it's some self doubt because he's not sure of himself yet. He's starting to get there, he's starting to learn the truths about him that he needs to know, but he's not there yet. Why isn't he not? Why is he not opening the bundle? I want to know what's inside. It's gonna be another cloak? Wow, I'm getting really intrigued. Perhaps I'm stupid, but I don't know what's in it, but it is written very well. She wouldn't have. He couldn't. A small voice answered, Oh, yes, she could. She could and would. Yeah, what, 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 what is it? What is it? Why is it? Yeah, John is drawing this out a lot. Neat knots tied with a precision that spoke loudly of Moraine's own hands. So she worked with her own hands. I like that. I like that. So it's important. Reminds me of Harry Potter when Dobby, you know what? I'm not going to spoil it for people who have not read Harry Potter, which you should have done because it's great. <laughs> um, yeah, with the, where he he does the thing with his own with his own hands to to make it true in a way and to to show that it's important to to, to Harry. In that situation here, it's the same. Moraine shows that it's important to her and that it's, it's important perhaps to the world because she's like the servant of the world currently. At least I think she sees herself as that. Oh, it's the banner. It's the banner. Yes, like a serpent scaled in gold and crimson. So badass. The, I like the... Uh, this the symbol, but she so yeah, wow. Okay, 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 okay. So we currently have the gray old banner, and I haven't mentioned it yet, but it's come out a lot, lot. The banner they are riding under below currently has been brought up a lot. It's always in the like they they the Jordan describes something like yeah they wrote. Under the grey banner of the old world. It's always, it's always there in the past chapter or two chapters. And the, the, the fact that Moraine gave him this and then he now possesses it makes me now think that yes, Inter is going to die and Rand will lead them under the banner of Luz Theron. That's, that's, that's interesting. That's interesting. Where will that lead us? I don't know. So read on and find out, shall we? Oh no, Matt's coming. Oh, look at that. Look what he's got. He's got a, he's got a banner. Now, now he's even more a lord than he was before. I see, Perrin. See, I told him. I told you. He was a lord. Yeah. I don't know if he's... I don't get Matt's mood here in these situations. I'm pretty sure he's still pissed. But also he's his friend. I wonder when the, the friendship they have, the deep bond will out outpower so to speak the 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 weirdness that is between them currently yeah they are both smitten now but not in the positive way necessarily oh 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 yeah and uh, now rent finally snaps that's right the dragon's banner moraine wants me to be a puppet on tavalong strings Old dragon for the Esedai. She's going to put it down my throat wherever I want. But I will not be used. Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't believe it. I'm not sure though. Would I believe it? It seems shallow because yes, there are three false dragons now rising, so it kind of makes sense that they want to counter that with their own false dragon, but then again, they can't lie. Did he consider that? Did he did Rand consider that they can't lie about it? So when they all say you are the dragon reborn, they they and they I think they even said you're not the false dragon. I think they said that. Let me let me have a look here. 
Um, um, so we have... Yes, here it is. Here it is. The MLNC says, you are not a false dragon. You are the true dragon reborn. And she can't lie. Why won't... He, he should notice that, shouldn't he? I mean, I get why he doesn't, because he's under a lot of stress and stuff. But if he would think about this logically, he would know that he's the real dragon reborn. Though, so I, I mean, I, I understand him. I, I would be upset too there. And he's probably clouded by emotions. So, yeah. Fine, fine, yeah. Oh. Oh, Perrin now says, Rand, can you channel? Yeah. Yeah. And Fred is not answering. He says, I, I, I didn't want it. It's like Jon Snow, but better. I didn't want it. She's my queen. I didn't want it. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I did not ask for it. I don't want to, but, but I do not think I know how to stop it. Yeah. I like this moment a lot because, because, I think that was necessary. Um, they have this, un yeah, not even unspoken fight, but they have the this 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 these these difficulties with each other currently because they think Rand is like some he thinks he's better or whatever. I don't really know, and yeah, probably because Rand was an a bag uh, towards them in the beginning of the this book. And now they really saw he broke down. He he's he's at his last. He's he he reached his limit, so to speak. And and I think that's a very beautiful moment. I hope I'm not sure yet because I haven't read it. But I I I think this would be a good moment for them to make up and to understand Rand really. Because yeah, he can say yeah, I I'm sorry. I just wanted to protect you, and that might be true. But it sounds a bit shallow. But that they now see how, how he feels and that he's really at a loss at what he's doing and, and, and about the future. That's very good. Yeah, and Matt is thinking they will just kill them all because they are dark friends. Yeah, yeah, but and Perrin is like, Matt, shut up. Yeah, and 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 Rand is uh, and Matt is like, yeah, Rand will go mad. Either way, he will kill us all. Why did they not gentle you? They, they knew. Why did they not gentle you? They don't all know who Rand's side. The Emelyn. <laughs> Matt is like, Emelyn Seed? What? What? <laughs> yeah. And Moraine told me I'm the Dragon Reborn, and then they said I could go wherever I wanted. Don't you see, Matt? They are trying to use me. Mate, they told you they can't lie, mate. They can't lie. What's wrong with you? <laughs> and yes, I, I mean, I would have understood if they said it cryptically, but they, they said it clear as day. You're the Dragon Reborn. You're the true one. You're not a false dragon. You're the true one. <laughs> oh, God. And Matt just dismisses that. He just says, yeah, it doesn't change the fact that you can channel. Shut up, Matt, Perrin said. Why are you here, Rand? Okay, uh, Intra seems to like him. And yeah. Oh, and now Matt, Matt tells them that he does it for Matt. Uh, Rand tells them that he does it for Matt. Yeah. Oh, now Matt realizes it came because of the dagger and not because of the horn. Yeah, because he's your friend, Matt. He, because he's your friend, he's your best friend. And, Rand, <laughs> and now Matt is starting to make fun again a bit like, you sure you aren't going mad? Don't want to channel at me, bro? And Rand is throwing a pebble at him. He should do that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, no. Yeah, they are now making up. I really like this. This is very good. And this is a good situation to make up. And now I understand why Jordan made it that they did not make up before, because this is the moment they needed to really understand each other again. Because they lived 
a part of it through the revelation that runs the dragon. I mean, or a channel or whatever you want. <laughs> and Matt says, yeah, I'm afraid of you going mad. No offense, Ren. No, no offense, but. This, this typical no offense, but. <laughs> wow, a merchant's guard told me before the Red Angel found him, someone who channeled, and that's what Matt heard. He woke one morning and his whole village was flat, smashed flat. And now parents just teasing him, yeah. Oh, okay, no, he's not that all right. He says to Rand, yeah, I understand that you came for me. I, I really am thankful, but you are changing, mate. And then he leaves. And Rand asks Perrin, and I think Perrin is more on his side, perhaps because he was very calm during all of this. It's always stated he was calm, and we know he's a calm person, but... Yeah, he doesn't know. Yeah, and Perrin says, yeah, burn the banner, run away. That's what I would do. Yeah, I would run, but maybe you can't. Think about that, Rand. Yeah, he's very wise. I like Perrin here. I think this is my favorite Perrin moment until now, because Perrin is... Very mature, very thought through in, in, in what he says. So he, he has thought about it, I think. He's calm and he's very, very intelligent here. Because that's what you, you think you probably should do. Run away, but perhaps you can't. Sometimes you cannot run away. Yeah, yeah, okay. He says it here. Sometimes you can't run, yeah. Yeah, and now Rand is getting paranoid. Perhaps she gave me this so I would run. Perhaps she's manipulating me. Yeah, don't, don't ever think it. Yeah, okay, now he takes it with him. Yeah, so Moraine really cared for the banner as well. I think Moraine really, really, really trusts Rand. And he doesn't see it, but he, she does. I think she really does. Oh, okay, so Huron will sleep next to Rand or close by. I like Huron, the sniffer. Yeah, and Rand is really down. Um because he's he, he's thankful for Huron's company, yeah. Oh Yeah, great. New perspective pattern fan apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Great, why not? Why not have Pat and Fane here? This is gonna be so interesting. So interesting. Especially because of the chapter title, which implies some heavy story project progress well, progression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pat and Fane had been changed, and when he went into Shalgal or Goth, he had dot dot. And Pell and Fane is the dagger now, great, yeah. Okay, so there are 12 dark friends left and 20 trollocks. I thought there were more, yeah. Oh. 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 I see. I see. So the murderer wanted to go north again to the Blight and Shayul Ghoul, but he did not because something is inside of him and that's why they changed path all the time because it was a silent struggle between them and he sometimes took command and then one day, one day he really, really changed, yeah, and then he impaled the murderer probably. Ooh. Okay. Okay. So the houses were deserted. So who was the woman? We don't know. But yeah, he, he ended the murder or the murder was somehow ended by his commander or whatever. And during that, he was so glad that it was dead that he did not care for the Trollocs raiding everything. Yeah, uh, makes sense as well. Wow. Kill them all. You may feed, but then make a pile of everything that remains for our friends to find. Put the heads on top. 
neatly now. Go. Yeah, he's lost it. What horrors are inside his soul now? More death is coming. More death. Okay, they have the villagers with them and now they end them. I mean, yeah. Great. Okay, so Pedro Fane says he found a way out of being bound as a dark friend is. And the other dark friends are now his. Oh, wow. What is happening? Okay, and they ate the horses. Yeah, great. Yeah, and someone says like, yeah, I have served. And Pedro Fane is like, what are you to me less than peasants? Herd cattle for the Trollocs, perhaps? If you want to live, cattle, you must be useful. Yeah, yeah, he's really, he's now a full-fledged villain, lord, overlord, badass, bad mofo. Yeah, and they're like broken, they tell, would tell him everything. He wants to know and more. Yeah, okay. So Fane ignored all of it and went to his prize, not caring because since he'd has dealt with the fate, they wouldn't dare touch him. Yeah, I mean, so um, who killed a fate? Land did. So would they be very afraid of land too? Okay, so Pen Fane has the golden, uh, the golden chest and he can't open it, at least that. Ooh, he could not feel Altor now. The distance between them was too great. Or perhaps Altor was doing his vanishing trick. Sometimes in the keep, the boy had suddenly vanished from Fane's senses. How, though? Yeah. We'll dance a tome in the head. I will be free of you. That's what he says, and that's the chapter. Yeah, so Patton Fane, there is something growing inside of him. It's more death, the dark one, perhaps something different even. And he's, he's pulling Rand too, towards Omen Head. And I guess that, yeah, when did, when did Rand vanish? Was it when he was with the Essendai, just that, or was it more? Was it when he was with the... Uh, Focusing on the void and the flame, perhaps. Not sure, though. Not sure. Whatever. I hope you enjoyed. <laughs> Sorry. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, as always, consider liking and subscribing. You know the stuff. Sharing, whatever. And yeah, it's it's heating up. The story is heating up. And can't wait a bit for the perspective change as well to Egwen and Anif. But yeah, where are they gonna go? I mean, I know they are going to go to Tomenhead, but where are they? You know, what way will they take? What will we see? And what will the characters do? I really like the moments between Rand and Matt and Perrin here. And we'll just see where it goes. And I hope you have a great day. And as always, please take care of yourself. And uh, yeah, see you soon. Bye.